Metal Herlon Number no. 7, May 1976, published by Les Humanoids Associés. <music> Greetings, friends. Today we're going to take a look at issue number 7 of Metal Herlon, the revolutionary French illustrated science fiction and fantasy magazine which was the precursor to Heavy Metal magazine, which would launch in 1977 in the United States. This particular issue, number seven, has got probably one of the worst covers of any Metal Herlant cover. I'm not sure why they use this cover. It's kind of like the antithesis of science fiction. Uh, Metal Herlant, heavy metal, whatever. Obviously, it was never used as a heavy metal cover. However, in this issue, number seven of Metal Herlant, one of the greatest sci-fi cyberpunk illustrated stories ever done, which completely influenced Blade Runner, a film that would come out in 1982, directed by Ridley Scott. And on the inside cover, we have an ad for Hi Lou book distributor in France, the editorial by Jean-Pierre Dionnet, some advertisements here, collection of cinema, Greta Garbo, Boris Karloff, the Museum of Vampires. Page 7, we start off with Sergio Macedo, and on page 17, New York with Jean-Pierre Dionnet, then on page 19, The Long Tomorrow, by Dan O'Bannon and Mobius. I believe that's the Metamorphosis of the Book Eaters on page 17 with a variety of writers and artists contributing. Then we have another installment of Les Adventures de Roger Fringat. They have it Tringat, but it's Fringat, just a typo. 1976, page 32. Then a Mobius piece on page 35. I believe that is The Marvels of the Universe by Serge Clerc on page 36. Some more Mobius, of course, with the airtight garage of Jerry Cornelius. Another article by Jean-Pierre Dionnet on page 49. Vuz by Philippe Joulet on page 51. Jean-Claude Messieris on page 59. Marjorie comes in on page 71. We have another piece by Mobius on page 75. And it finishes off with Patrice Roy on page 79. Fantastic ad here, folks, for Tardy. Two new albums by Tardy. And, of course, Tardy did so many pieces for both Metal Herlant and Heavy Metal. Now we go on to Macedo, the first story, Selenia. And of course, here is Macedo's quasi airbrush style. Very cool full page robot here. I just love this one. And suddenly there's a naked girl, of course. Well, it's Macedo after all. And here we have the robot battling the spacemen. And this is a, an article by uh, Jean Pierre Dionnet about New York. Cast Iron Architecture in New York from Dover Books. I guess that's a photo. Credit. Part 1 of The Long Tomorrow by Dan O'Bannon. Art by Mobius. This is the first publication of The Long Tomorrow. In the May 1976 issue, number 7 of Metal Herlong. Right off the bat, you can see where Blade Runner drew a lot of influence in the cityscapes. We have our detective in a flying car flying around the city. This is just absolute Blade Runner cityscape. I love the colors on this too. Vibrant, just beautiful. Now, of course, this is in French, the entire magazine. It is a French magazine after all. But uh, the link is in the description where you can get The Long Tomorrow in English. And I highly recommend it. If you have not read this before, it is essential reading for graphic novel-based sci-fi and cyberpunk. Dueling cars here. Fantastic. 
And of course, here we have the return of the book eaters. Another Jean-Pierre Dionnet article, but with other writers involved as well. Love these illustrations. They're talking a bit about Damnation Alley. They mention Phantom of the Paradise, Monty Python, Rocky Horror Picture Show, Land That Time Forgot is also given a mention, as well as Bert I. Gordon's Food of the Gods, which, by the way, is now on Tubi, if anybody's interested. And, of course, the continuing adventures of Roger Fringat. A great ad for Gale by Droulet. Nice, simple, Mobius drawing. And here is the two-pager by the great Serge Clerk. Marvels of the Universe with a lot of small, very densely worded imagery. Two-pager by Femur. Another article here. Arzak Rides Again. That glorious, massive poster from the two-page spread that originally appeared in Metal Herlant. And, of course, was reprinted in heavy metal. But this is the... Basically, it's 1 meter by 0.70 meters. So it's over 3 feet wide. Huge poster. And Mobius Le Garage Hermetique. The airtight garage of Jerry Cornelius continues. And this is a two-pager. Arzak Harzak. <laughs> Another ad for, of course, the Mobius graphic novel. And we continue with some really great black and white imagery from Moss. Guy reminds me a lot of Robert Crumb. Has that kind of underground style. <laughs> Andy Cap. I bet you weren't expecting that. And, of course, we have Vuz, or Vuz, by Droulet. I just dig the hell out of his line work. So great. And the humor. Ah, yes. Yeah. I would not like to be on the receiving end of that, I'll tell you. Beautiful, full-color story by Meziers is just fantastic and this shows up again and again for instance in best of collections as well and for good reason it's just a beautifully drawn very well done piece highly recommended great color work as well and here's some books on erotic subjects Diableries Erotiques for example Another one-page installment of 1996. And then a story by Marjorie, the artist. Just a two-pager, but really cool. Love this. These flying pterodactyls. A really crazy advertisement for the real free press catalog. Featuring Bizarre Sex Magazine, I guess. The Lost Connection for Solid Facts. But they do have Von Baudet's Dead Bone advertised in this as well. All of the Metal Hulon issues to date. These are issues 1 through 6 here. And various books by the artists. We have Corbin with Rolf. Of course, Jean Giraud. A.K.A. Mobius. A great half-page ad for... The science fiction store in France called Azazoth. And one final story by Patrice Roy. And a full page ad for Futuropolis. And on the back cover, those beautiful posters by Droulet. Sometimes you see these pop up on eBay. It's rare, but they do show up once in a blue moon. And that concludes... This volume, this is issues one through seven, folks, of Metal Herlant. We have gone through all seven issues. And of course, beginning with the fantastic issue number one. 
one of my favorite early uh, covers, no, no doubt about it. You will notice that, of course, the uh, header is different. The design is different from Metal Herlalt. This is issue number three. But I just love it. Somebody just made this volume. They literally just stamped it Metal Herlalt. Tomo Uno. So it was in, this is from Spain. Tomo Uno, volume one. I hope you enjoyed this look at Metal Herlant number no. 7 from May 1976, featuring the fantastic part 1 of The Long Tomorrow, written by Dan O'Bannon with art by Mobius. And as always, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you soon.